Thank you so much for agreeing to talk with me for uh, for National Autism Awareness Month. Okay. <laughs> so I just thought if it's okay with you, we'll just hang out for uh, however long you want and just talk to you know our audience, which is a lot of teachers. Uh, a lot of parents, a lot of community members, people that are interested in, well, choosing love <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, and making the world a better place. And um, so I just thought maybe we would talk about some of your experiences in school, maybe some of the places where you struggled and hope, hoping that you would be able to share some of the things that you wish that you had had and uh and some of the things th that would have made your life easier and and then uh what it looks like for you now does that sound good okay all right so so lyle viter it is such a pleasure to welcome you to the jesse lewis choose love podcast how are you doing today i'm doing well did you work today? Yes, I did. Okay, what is, tell, tell us a little bit about your job. It's a temporary job, but I could get hired. I have no idea. I find out next Tuesday if I get hired for this job. If I do, I still work there afterwards, but if I don't, then I'm back home. Okay, well, that's exciting. So what, tell us what the job is. It's La Quinta Hotel in Danbury, Connecticut, and I basically, I mop, I wipe down tables, customer service, I vacuum, I just do hotel service everywhere, even um, clean like garbage outside that people throw. Out of what? Outside what? Outside the hotel. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, and and we've talked about this before. And uh, and you've had quite some experiences that have been kind of interesting. Yeah, but not in a good way. Well, yeah, but just kind of, you know, it's like with everyone who works, there are there are struggles and 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 difficulties. And sometimes those are opportunities for us to learn and grow. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, so you graduated from the Newtown school system and I know that you first moved from Stratford. When did you move from Stratford, Connecticut? I think either 2007 or 2009, around that time. Cause okay. like when we moved to Newtown, we were kind of living in two places, one like apartment and then like the other was like the Stratford house. So we would go back and forth occasionally to Stratford and Newtown. But okay. like we literally moved into Newtown, um, I think 2009 or 2007 around that mark. And you were, were you in middle school? I was in elementary school. Oh, you were in middle school. Okay. So, um, so what, what did you think about school and tell us what your schooling was like? Schooling was interesting. P some people were nice. Some people were fake, being like fake nice to me, but really they were just mean. And then there was just kids that were just flat out mean and didn't care. So do you so, think that, it were, were you, would you say that you were bullied? Yeah, in a way, because they trick me. They call me insults. They say I look like bad, like, and it's like a really like, you know, criminal person or like, I would, you know, they would just compare me to like bad people. And was this starting in elementary school? You know, the earliest I can remember is from like Reed, which was like my fifth grade and sixth grade years. Those are your earliest I, memories? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I got bullied in fourth grade. I remember. <laughs> yeah, what's on the playground. The, what's the memory? 
um yeah some kid who i bring my webkins he put like some chip wood chips on my webkins and like well he peed on me before that has happened oh it did okay um so did your teachers get involved when that happened i literally can't remember i just remember just like being sad yeah yeah that's that's horrendous lyle i'm so sorry that that happened to you all i remember Uh, is just sadness i never like got back at them i just remember getting sad you you were sad and so you're i'm asking you how your school was and you're remembering um these incidents that made you sad um huh go ahead the only really happy moments I can remember of school is like field trip days where I, you know, I just go off on my own and I don't have to deal with the annoying ones. Cause I usually during field trips, I go on my own. So you would just go off by yourself and then you wouldn't have to worry about torment. Yeah, because I was just on my own and like certain places I would just do things on my own. So would you say, I mean, you started off by sharing some pretty difficult memories. Would you say, if you look back on your school experience, because now you've graduated from high school, that it, I mean, how would you, like in a sentence, how would you describe it? Was it, was it mostly bad, mostly sad, mostly lonely? Was it, you had some good times? Mostly bad. There were some good times I can point them out. But like mostly I just remember just bad times and being stressed with like the work and the students and some teachers. Some teachers were nice and some teachers like were just too much. Yeah. Tell tell me one of the one of your happy times. Happy times. So I took a culinary class from my sophomore year to senior year. Um, it was that time where football was getting really big at the high school. So a lot of people were going. So my culinary teacher was like, all right, everyone in culinary class has to show up at the high school later tonight at the snack shack. We got to cook for people. Ooh, I get to cook for the football team. So you go there, like when everyone's like, you know, not even there, we open the kitchen, we turn on the fryer, the grill, the hot dog stand, get everything ready. And we just make food. I did grill and fryer most of the time. And I served burgers and fries to people. Sometimes like specials like mozzarella sticks, onion rings, and fun stuff. And you like that. And you like that. Mm Mm-hmm. That was fun. Yeah. Because I get to watch the football game and cook at the same time. There you go. You like watching football? No, I don't understand football, but it's entertaining. Like, I don't I, I don't know how it happens. It's just entertaining seeing people run and charge at each other. So, Lyle, you know, I, I try to figure out solutions. I just can't help it. And when you're talking to me about your experience at school, I'm wondering what, what, would have made it better what what do you think that teachers could have done um your parents maybe or you know i i know that having the students be kinder to you would have made it a better if i told them to be kinder that would only just make them more mean to me yeah so um so so it would then be the adults that would be having the influence. What do you think, you know, if we're trying to create a world for someone with autism that is going through school, what could the adults do? What could the teachers do? The the principal, um, the volunteers, the school staff, what could they do to make, what could they have done to make your time more comfortable? Oh, ooh. Um, Don't treat me like a toddler because they treated me like I was four years old and I was literally in my teenage years. So treated like a preschooler. That was another reason why I got made fun of. It's because they think I had like a preschool brain and like preschool intelligence. So I couldn't stand that for the life of me. And they would help me with unnecessary things. Some things I did get and some things I didn't, but I'd say, um, 
just work that everyone can handle. If it's too hard for you, then don't do it. If it's too easy, maybe move up a bit, see if you can do it. If you can't, go right and do it. But if you can't, just go back, like, I don't know, grade or whatever the difficulty is. Yeah, so... I did not go ahead. In classes. I did not know anything in a few classes. I didn't know what to do in personal finance. I did not know what to do in economics. I did not know what to do in American government. Those, and especially math. So those are the classes I was completely lost in because I didn't know what to do in either of those. So were you in regular classes when you went to school with the with uh, with other kids in your grade? Yeah, I, it was, I mean, all right. Like some classes were good that I can handle. Some classes were unbearable. So what were the good classes? The good classes were writing for film, culinary, um oh yeah earth science oceanography astronomy a lot of science classes and mythology those were the classes that i remember the most that i liked and like i had an easy time with so when you when you you were talking about the classes that you had a hard time with i mean what what happened i mean were did you have tutors or did yeah, did you get grades or what happened? I had tutors. They treated me like a moron and I still didn't know what to do because I'm like looking at like my worksheets for those classes and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Do I write numbers, letters, a sentence? Just all jumbled messes. And so and I got the kids in front of me while I'm like trying to be like, what is this? What does this mean? Yeah, I, I that's that's really uncomfortable. I mean, I guess... Um, I mean, I'm thinking like if, if they got to know you and they knew what you were comfortable doing and, and, you know, your capacity and, 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 and pushed you enough that you could grow, but didn't put you in situations where you had no idea. And then, and then um, there was the opportunity for other kids to make fun of you. I mean, that that would have helped. Yes, yeah, they took the opportunity. They knew when I was like stressed and like really stuck on something because I would just stare at it for like literally like a half an hour being like, what do I do? I don't even do anything. I just stare at it and figure out what to do. Well, the kids make fun of me and my tutor treats me like a preschooler. Yeah, so... Um... <sighs> What what do you think that uh, what what would your solution be, Lyle? I mean, I'm just like if 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 we're, I mean we're doing this for National Autism Awareness Month, so people that are going to be listening to this are going to be people that I mean anybody that listens to this wants to make your world more comfortable. They want to implement changes that would help somebody in your situation have a better time what would you tell them as they're listening that they should do um i guess like if they're in the same situation as me i'd say like you know they should be like um i can't do this work like there is no chance whatsoever and if the tutor or i mean the aide is treating them like a preschooler say to them like stop treating me like a preschooler if you're going to keep doing that then get out and as for the students they should just think because this happens, they literally think that they're like all cool and stuff. They're not, they're gonna have boring, ungrateful lives. They're gonna be selling drugs on the street and stuff. I, I think that kids that bullied you um, clearly did not feel good about themselves. I believe that bullying is a form of uh, trying to off put your pain onto somebody else. People that bully are normally bullied themselves because they've learned that behavior from somewhere. Yeah. That is learned yeah, behavior. My favorite, show, my favorite TV show had a bully who was picking on another bully because she went through a lot of trauma in the past. And which TV show is that? Steven Universe. Okay. Okay. I'm not familiar with that. So she took out her anger on everyone. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, 
Yeah. And of course that makes you angry when, when people aren't kind to you, it, it makes you angry. It makes me angry hearing you talk about it. So for sure. Uh -oh. You know, the thing is, that's why, that's why in the Choose Love movement, we teach compassion. We teach empathy. We teach kids how to look at another human being and to see the beauty in that human being. That's so important. And that's something that we can teach. Um, so, so now you, you're home, but you have a job and uh, it's really exciting because you're waiting to see next week if you're going to get employment. Yes, it's a temporary job. It's really fun. I was expecting not to like it, but it threw a curveball and I actually really like it a lot. So if I don't get hired, I'll be really sad. Okay, so we're all going to be rooting for you. Probably by the time this this podcast comes out, you're going to know. And so we'll have to give all the audience an update on you. Would you be willing to do that? Um, I mean, I could, yeah. All right. I mean, I'll just, I'll come over and I'll give you a big hug if you get the job and we'll snap a picture. And if you don't, I'll come over and give you a big hug. We'll snap a picture and then we'll celebrate when you get your next job. <laughs> all right. So what are what I'm just going to ask one more question. What are what are the things that you would change in your world now? Like Definitely. what is your go ahead. My living situation, I'd like to live on my own hopefully with a girl that will always be on my on my side. Yeah. Yeah. And a permanent job and definitely a better transportation source than the one I have now. Yeah. So your your how do you your your mom drives you around, right? Nope. I take the sweetheart bus system, and it's not good. Okay, it's not good because it only runs you to the job and back, right? It doesn't give you the freedom that you probably need. It doesn't. Well, yeah, it doesn't give me the freedom. There's a lot of things wrong with it. I mean, I don't want to spend all day talking about it, but there's so many flaws in it that I just can't explain because it's going to take me all day to just explain all the flaws it has. I had yeah. a rough time today, even. You have a rough time? So, say that again. I had a rough time with it today, even. And why is that? Because they were incredibly late because the new driver didn't even know where he was going and he didn't know about me and the other students. So, yeah, thanks for making us wait for so yeah. long because he was he didn't know where he was going ah i hope that straightens out i'm sorry it's hard it's hard when you're relying on somebody to pick you up and get you someplace well lyle thank you so much for sharing is there anything else that you want to share with with uh, choose love or with me before you go i i just made a good impression like i hope i did a good job for the podcast choose love and just everything. You always do a great job. And you know, I love you. And uh, awesome. I'm so appreciative. Thank you so much for being on here and for sharing with the audience. And um, I hope you have a good rest of the day. You too. Hey, hey, oh. It's all part of us. We can all choose love. It'll lift you up if you let it in. Let the healing Thanks begin. for listening to the Choose Love podcast. Our positive, empowering messaging is reaching millions of people all over the planet. Join the worldwide movement to choose love. Our programming is in over 10,000 schools, homes, and communities across the country, in every state, and over 112 countries and counting. We are giving individuals of all ages the essential life skills they need to flourish. You can be part of the solution, too. We have sponsorship opportunities available that help support us and enable you to share in helping create a safer, more peaceful, and loving world. Contact me on our website, chooselovemovement.org.